Now, some of you have seen me speak, you know this is Elvis. And Elvis is the 1,800-pound black Angus steer that's in my backyard. Honest to goodness, right? Gayla's met Elvis. She can attest to it. No bull. <laughs> I'm corny like that, sorry. Um, about three and a half years ago, I took a leap of faith. I moved from a very nice home in, in Tampa. I moved out to Dade City, Florida. Who's heard of Dade City, Florida? Yay! So you know it's about the size of Mayberry, isn't it? Right? And I purchased a five-acre farm. And Elvis came with that farm. Now, I know just by looking at me you won't be able to tell this, but I didn't know one thing about farms, much less livestock. But I followed my passion because, you see, all my life I've been passionate about animals. And it's always been a dream of mine to have a lot of land and have a lot of animals. I got chickens, people. I haven't bought an egg in two but years. But I followed my passion. Now, in Dade City, Florida, it's not uncommon for my neighbors to have cattle. They got lots of cattle, lots of cattle. When I go to the feed store, they'll say to me, hey, Missy. I'm not really sure why they call me Missy, but they do. And I say, hey, and they say, how many head of cattle you got there, Missy? And I go, wow, I got one. <laughs> one little head of cattle and his name is Elvis. Then they laugh, and I'm not really sure if they're laughing with me or at me, but I don't really care, because Elvis is my pet. Elvis will never end up on a plate sitting next to a baked potato, nor will he end up between a bun. He's my pet. He's in my backyard. I brush him every day, don't I, Gayla? I spray him for flies. I give him treats. I spoil an 1,800-pound steer. Yeah, I'm a little crazy. But anyway, I guess you could say I have my own version of Green Acres, but I'm all about the pink, so I call it Pink Acres. I tell you that story just to emphasize the importance of following the passion that you have in your life. You've got to when you be live passionate. on a five-acre farm and you have animals, these animals like to eat. So you have to go to this store called the Tractor Supply Store. Has anyone heard of that? Yes. It was all new to me. So I go to the Tractor Supply Store, usually dressed like this. <laughs> you know those cowboys were loving it. So when I go there, this is literally, <laughs> this is literally my shopping cart. I didn't know that every single item in the tractor supply store, including a, a stick of gum, weighs 50 pounds. I'm like, can I get it in a 10 pound bag? It'll it cost you so much more. I don't care, I can carry it. So this literally is what my little cart looks like in my heels going out to my car. There's my Louis Vuitton bag in the trunk. <laughs> So I used to have to unload all this stuff, and I had to go to the tractor supply store at least once a week. It was becoming kind of a pain in the bee. That is, until I met Joe. Oh, Joe. Nordstrom's has their personal shoppers. I got Joe at the track at their supply store. And he's kind of cute, ladies, right? Not only, and, and I tell him I use him in this presentation, he about died. He's like, are you kidding? And I spoke to a Tampa group, a couple weeks ago, and somebody goes, I know Joe. <laughs> they said, he helped me pick out the poles for my fence. I'm like, oh my God, we love Joe. <laughs> anyway, the Joe Meister not only helps me with my cart, lifts all those 50-pound bags into my car, he puts up with me and my silly questions. Joe, you think Elvis gets lonely out there by himself? <laughs> Joe, it's going to be cold tonight. Should I buy Elvis a blanket? and he does it with a smile on his face. Now, once I leave, I have no clue what Joe's saying to the rest of the staff. You're in his presentation. <laughs> That's right. He, yeah, he has a presentation all about that, I'm sure. But when I'm with Joe, he makes me feel like I'm the most important person, the only person in tractor supply. Joe has the heart of a winner and... One more time, we can do better. Heart of a winner and... Right? 